All right, so we've got our drum loop sounding the way we want to. We've quantized it. We even tweaked the sounds in the impulse. Now it's time to add some loops to it. The way we do this is we're going to go ahead and play the beat that we've made. And we're going to go to the loop that we have in the source files in the file one browser that we've got right here. Now the loop sounds a little, a little messy, but we'll go ahead and fix that later on. Now we're just going to click on him and drag him over to the audio track. Just like that. Now, something to notice that when you're auditioning loops in live, the loops always get to be auditioned on the downbeat. And the loops can also, live will audition any loops or anything you're playing, any MP3s, to whatever tempo the session's at. So notice that the audition's actually speeding up. So it's kind of cool. You actually get to hear the audition loop at the tempo that you're at way before you can even edit it. So you can kind of get an idea of how it's going to sound when you drop it in. So let's go to that loop that we just added, and we're going to go ahead and play both clips. Right, we're going to double click that and now we get to see the actual waveform down here. Now, if you notice, Live automatically added these markers over here. And if you double click on them, they highlight. And what these are, these are transient markers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use them to kind of guide our audio around. So you can actually double click and add your own transients if you want. I and mean, that's what we're going to do right here. I'm going to double click over here. And I've got this transient set up right in the beginning of this wave file. I'm going to snap them over to the grid. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing for the, all the other transients that we see. And it's kind of like quantizing your audio, which is a really cool feature in Ableton. So you just click, snap over to the grid line. I'm going to do the same thing with him. I'm going to bring him forward. I'm going to do this right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the loop marker down and uh, we should have just a four beat loop. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and see what we got. So it sounds a little bit cleaner. So we snapped our audio. It's kind of like quantizing audio. And you can quantize audio actually. If you would highlight and you can highlight just by clicking and dragging, once you've got you've got your audio highlighted, you would do your quick key command to quantize. That's Apple Shift U. And you can set your quantize marker. I'm setting it the same way I've quantized it the MIDI. And hit OK. And you notice that it will quantize. It will even add an extra, um, an extra marker. So now that we've got our audio snapped to where we want, we can come up with different variations of it. Now, what's cool about this is I can just go ahead, click, and drag this over. And come up with different variations. Now, it sounds kind of cool. So I like the way this sounds. All right, now what I'm going to do is hold Option down, click on the loop, and drag him to the clip box below him. And what this does is just duplicates it so I can make variations. So I'm going to go ahead and play the first one, which is the same as the second clip. And on the fly, what I like to do is I just like to tweak the loop and come up with some different variations. So I'm going to click this and just drag him in different places. And I really like the sound of that beat right there. So I'm going to leave that alone and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, option, click, and drag him below. It's gonna be the same as the second clip. I'm just gonna play him now, and maybe come up with a different different idea. So just maybe just move this guy over a little. Now you can just you can spend so you can spend so many hours coming up with different variations for your loops. All right, so let's play our loop. All right, I'm going to go ahead and trigger the variation that we made earlier, the middle one. All right, so 
So I'm going to go ahead and solo this. And that's just the loop by itself without the drums we made earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and tweak this up by using the sample display, which we can find down here. This is where you're able to pitch up the sample or drop the pitch. You can change the gain. You can snap it back to zero by just hitting the delete button. You can do that on any fader that you're on in Ableton Live. Flip it in reverse. And now we can go ahead and change the actual speed and the warping of the loop. You can do that by clicking these buttons over here, which will speed it up double time or slow it down half time. And this actually works out when you have a loop that you want to speed up double time, but you don't want to change the tempo of the overall session. So let's see how it sounds when you click it for double time. And now let's go ahead and slow it back down to the normal tempo. And now let's go ahead and slow it down half time. So you can do this stuff on the fly. And I, I normally do this just to see what kind of cool loops and sounds I can make out of the loops I bring it into my, into my projects. Now down here where it says beats in this dialog box, this is the actual warp mode. So right now we're warping this loop in beat mode, but you can also warp it in, with tones for synth patches or textures for like strings and stuff like that. And then you can repitch and this will warp the loop. You can hear the pitch change up and down. This will change the pitch of each warp marker to match the tempo. And then complex, this is something you would use when you have like a vocal that you're warping so that you can keep the best quality possible. For right now, we're going to leave it at beats. Now I'm going to go ahead and unsolo that and bring it back with the beat that we made. So I have three variations of that one loop. What I'm going to do is go all the way down to the L, which is launch mode, open that up. And then here you have the options of what the clip will do once it's launched. And what I want that first clip to do is to kind of go back and forth randomly to the other clips without me having to do it by hand. So this is a cool thing to do with loops. And you could do that by simply going all the way down here where it says follow action, which means what's going to happen after it's launched. And I want it to go to the next clip below it. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and then set the ratio that that happens. I, I normally just, you could set it halfway or if you want it to happen every time the clip is launched, you can just set it all the way up. And we'll just do that for right now. Now next, I'll do the same thing for the second clip. The launch window already open. I'm going to tell this one to just go to the next one down. Same thing with that. And I'll go to the third, the very last one. And I'm going to tell him to repeat the process by going to the very first one on the top clip. That will happen all the time as well. So let's see what happens when I go ahead and launch the first clip. So you see the clips being launched automatically. And this will keep going and you can have this happen and you actually don't have to worry about doing this on my hand because live will continue to do this. Now this is something cool to do if you have a whole bunch of loops, uh, if you have one loop, but you've done maybe like eight different variations of it, and so you can have live just switch between the two, and you can command it to go to the top or bottom, and so you can have a lot of fun with this. All right, so we've got a really good sounding loop going on. Now something I like to do is kind of combine the two tracks that I've got playing right now and create one loop. And I like doing this by routing this to another audio track and just recording it within live because I like to tweak and, and maybe flip up the loop and maybe do some really cool fills with it. And I'm going to show you how I do that in the next couple steps. So let's go ahead and make a, an audio track. And we can do that by just right clicking on here, creating an audio track. And now we're going to click this first audio track, go down to the master where it says audio to master. And now we're just going to go ahead and select three dash audio, which is the name of this track. And it can make it easier. And we can just go over here, hit Apple and R to rename it. And let's call this main loop. Now you notice when I went back down to here where it said master, it changed it to main loop. That's the track we're going to be 
going into. So I'm going to do the same thing with my beat over here. And now, if I hit the in on the monitor section, I'll be able to see, I'll be able to hear both of these tracks go into this one track. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and record that on the first clip box. As you see, the screen below, live already starts to record it. And cool. I'm going to hit auto back on monitor. And I'm just going to turn these off by clicking the, the green boxes, just muting them. And now I'm just going to play the loop I recorded. Now this is both track one and two together. Cool. So now I get to go ahead and edit this audio the same way I did with the first loop. And I'm going to snap it to here. If I zoom in by just clicking the line and dragging the mouse up and down, I'm going to double click this transit here and snap them over to bar three. I'm going to just go down here as well and just move anything over that might seem to be off. Now this is the reason why I do this. Because sometimes I actually like to drag this over and just come up with little fills by just having one bar. And this is really cool to do when you want to just have like variations, drum rolls and just build ups. And this would actually start to spark up some ideas to come up with other um, other songs and, and stuff like that. And you can actually just pitch up the same way we did with the first loop in the sample display. You can flip in reverse. So this is a really cool way to come up with new ideas. So you can combine not just two, but maybe all the tracks you're working with, dump them in here and treat them as giant loops and just have variations and just continue to trigger them like we've done before. So we just finished messing with some loops and we even created our own loop. And this stuff's cool because you can create your own combination of loops and then come up with new ideas with the same loops you've started off with.